a little extra pep in your step with that one. You really got going. I feel well, like I got normally I, we go slow and it mm -mm. picks up. You were like right off the bat. Absolutely not. When there's just so much to get into this basketball oh, this, team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome on in. It's another edition of the Clap Your Hands podcast. Elliot Short Parks and Jack Fritz uh, hanging out with you. We have a big event tonight, Elliot. We do. Once again, a Thursday right on time. Yes. Um, uh, and look, the last few events, shout out to everyone that came out. It's been awesome. Uh, McGurk's is always a fun time. We best. were at, at McGurk's yesterday. I actually, By the way, I had McGurk's food drop on Tuesday. I was at McGurk's <laughs> yeah. yesterday. And then McGurk's tonight. We're all McGurked up over I'm here. saying this in all... So I'm somebody that... Dude, what is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have TV in here, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and for the last half hour, it's I actually been, wish I could like yeah. put a camera on. You it. can't. Yeah. No, it's it was it's had a fire background, like a little. And fire. now this looks uh, like it's, commercial. Now it's a commercial. Yeah, yeah. Commercial. but anyway, um, I'm like a creature of habit. Okay. In general, like I just very much am. Like, uh, here's a good example. You change your that, hair. You change your hairdresser. Yes. <laughs> But <laughs> here's an example. Like you told me about the Zach Bryan album. It's literally all I've listened to yeah. for months, right? Yeah. You're even wearing flannels now. I'm wearing flannels now. <laughs> yeah, I'm slowly becoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I will say this in all seriousness, not just saying it because the event's there. I could eat McGurk's like five days a week. It's like, very good. And I will say like it always looks dope. Like it all like I would enjoy hanging out there and drinking there. It's a shame I can't, but it looks awesome. Yeah. And the one in Lionville. Well, I could with, but I have to drive. Correct. Yes. So we're at McGurk's in Lionville tonight. Um obviously we're watching Sixers Bucks. Yeah. It should be a competitive one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly are they down double digits? Are we going to give four, them a half? 4 minutes. We didn't give them a half, no. Yeah. yeah. I just I look, I've we have a lot of things to get into the Embiid thing, Always. the Toby thing. Yeah. But I need to have like a open venting session here. Please do. Sometimes I get annoyed when they win now because it feels so pointless. Like when they beat the Knicks and they score like 65 points. It's it like, was awful. It's like, what are we doing here? Like, honestly, it makes me appreciate the process even more. Watching this current Sixers team makes me feel like what they did before with the process was the correct take because the Sixers winning right now and – Look, when the playoffs get around and they're the sixth seed or whatever. Oh, I know. I know playoff Elliott. Yeah, I'm going to be man. back. I'm gonna yeah, be back. he's coming. But, but, but it just feels pointless to me right now. So the Knicks win. But but it's not pointless. I know it's not. I know it's not. I'm saying emotionally it's how I feel. Well, this is how. But like even it's... yesterday, like, you know, uh, the Heat lost. The Pacers lost. Like the the teams around them are not putting the Sixers away. This must be. Don't give the Sixers. Uh, what is the Phillies thing you said? Don't let, don't let the Sixers get hot? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Don't let the Phillies get, or don't let the Sixers get in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good tweet. Yeah. If you let <laughs> them let get the, in. Yeah, don't let the Sixers get in. Yeah. Watch out. The, yeah. People are shaking in their shorts, waiting for the scene the Sixers to make the playoffs. But this must be what NBA purgatory just feels yes, like. Yes, yes. Like, yeah. this is how, so I... I know I host a Sixers podcast. You do, and I, this is probably Currently recording. It. This is probably a dumb thing to say. It's all right. Might might as well get it out there. Yeah, I really didn't care about the Sixers until the process. <laughs> like I didn't care about the uh, my favorite Sixer growing up. Honestly, was Andre Miller. Thought he ran a great point guard. Andre Miller. Post Iverson. Post Iverson. Okay. Right. Between Iverson and the process. How old were you in one? Uh, I was six. Okay, so you no, were, I was, I was no. five. You were born in 96 then. No, I was born in 94. So I was seven. Seven. Okay. All right. <laughs> My birthday is tomorrow. Andre Miller's way. number. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Who could forget? No, because I, I was like Andre Miller, professional point guard. Yeah. I'm a big professional point guard. You guy. are. You are a big, like, uh, <laughs> play the game the right way. <laughs> yeah, me, and, me, and, uh, yeah. me and Larry Brown. And I couldn't understand I couldn't understand how Andre Miller was so wet for mid range, dude. Yeah. Because it was such an ugly little shot. God, um, he was the worst. Dude, he could, he could run a pick and he roll. He liked it. Like, we're not recording video, but he did that, like. Oh, it's ugly. Yeah. It was him and Sean Marion. Marion like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> his was even uglier. Although, Aaron McKees was ugly. Yeah. Uh, I, who was, I know this is getting off topic. I'm sorry. Obviously. More money from the mid-range. Elton Brand or Andre Miller. I feel, uh, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I never saw Elton Brand miss that little elbow jumper. I feel like I had to have sold this story. But I would tell you when I took yoga with Elton Brand. <laughs> How long ago was this? Like, I don't know, 10 years. I was doing a yoga class. <laughs> was this when he was trying to hold on by a thread in the Literally, end? Literally, so I'm... I, I don't know how I didn't like see him coming in because it was literally like because he's all, like six foot nine. Well, it was like all girls, me and Ellen Brand. <laughs> so it wasn't like you know, it wasn't. Like, <laughs> he, he popped up out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't see you there. Yeah, it, but like he was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I the funniest thing of all time. 
the process was the greatest. And yeah. I think we can all admit that. That's what I tell what I wish I was watching right now. Him coming back <laughs> to, to mentor Okafer and Embiid. <laughs> yeah. It was like, like him stepping on the court again was it was beautiful. I could not believe he came it was beautiful. back. Yeah. I was like, there's my yoga part. <laughs> there, <he is. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. there he is. But yeah, like the process felt like it was leading to something. And that's why I think it was I think that's why it rejuvenized yeah. basketball I think you're, in the city. You're nailing this. I don't feel like this is leading to anything. Right. And that's what hurts me to watch it. Like, all right, they beat the Knicks, and I tweet the Knicks are nothing to worry about in the playoffs. And then the next game, the Knicks obviously <laughs> smack them around. But like the Knicks are like, what you think was going to happen? Yeah, I know. Well, but here's the thing. Let me teach people a lesson about Twitter. You don't take the victory laps too early. They are take the Knicks fans that retweeted. It was like, oh, like I was told, blah, blah, blah. Like imagine like the Knicks are not getting out of the second round of the playoffs. So what are we really talking about here? So I just think the Knicks and the Sixers, the Sixers without him beat are basically the Knicks. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, Knicks are building towards something, man. They they are. So are the Sixers if and beats healthy. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, no, this is. I don't know if they're building to anything. This feels like the. That's fair. That's a good point. Right about <laughs> the crescendo. Yeah. All the, all the winning is crescendo. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So much winning. <laughs> so much. So much winning, dude. They are. They are dreadful <laughs> to watch, man. <laughs> so like bad. they are. It's like you have to just laugh watching them know, play basketball. Like. Like the fact that Kelly Oubre legitimately he thinks this is his moment. I I probably shouldn't say this, but I guess that's a theme of the pod. It's like there's times I'm watching, I'm like, why did we start a Sixers pod? Dude, I turned it off. I could not watch the fourth quarter of the night. <laughs> it like it was they are so so bad. <laughs> and like Kyle Lowry, who I love. <laughs> He can't move. Like it's like he's walking, playing oh, basketball God. now. They're yeah. so bad. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the worst. They're the worst. <laughs> I've lost it. I'm sorry. I, I feel like it's all coming out. <laughs> like, I feel like Richie. Are you... I'm not crying. To be this clear. six years run has broken Ellie. <laughs> yeah, he's he's crying to oh, crying shit. away the pain, man. <laughs> they're so bad. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're the worst. <laughs> 79 73. It was the lowest scoring basketball. In case we had any big Sixers fans that listened to this, I think this is the. What we're just laughing at the team. They're so bad, though. Come on out to Kirks. Yeah, come on out to you have some Coors Light. We'll laugh at them together. <laughs> Elliot's crying, man. <laughs> what a run. What a run for this basketball team. Oh, that's a great Why video. did we start a Sixers podcast? <laughs> is, a, is, a, is a great. That might be the topic yeah, of the really podcast. Yeah, it might really be, might be, be the main title. Yeah, yeah, right why there. did we start oh, a Sixers shit. podcast? Yeah, just, just the worst. Just keep from like, crying. I laugh. That's yes, what it yeah. is. Yeah. I've defended this team for so many years. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> the greatest the greatest sentence Elliot has ever said was, it's all coming out right now. Yeah, yeah, Watching all of that emotion. Finally broke yeah. yeah between a laugh and a cry at the same time <laughs> so like bad laugh cry <laughs> really just is. pour out of emotion that it's is the worst just let if, if any Sixers fan needs to know how much uh, how much Elliot has like bared of this team oh, over no. the past years like it's, it's coming out yeah right I feel like, like I, you have defended this team they broke me hell high water <laughs> yeah, they, they broke me. they broke me that's it's tough it. that's actually they are tough. they are the worst but I'm ready to defend Toby <laughs> if you want to do that all right can we just yeah so go we'll, on about Toby we'll get to the Embiid stuff but. Oh, Nick Nurse speed stuff too is what Yeah, he's also making you cry. Yeah. The the Nick the, the Nick Nurse finally the other day was saying he said, Nope, not yet on benching Toby. Yeah. He has somehow stooped to a new level of <laughs> awfulness. Like Would you rather score two points or zero points? Zero, dude. <laughs> yeah. Two uh, two points was in like what are you doing? Yeah. He, he, and it's like every time he touches the basketball, I'm like, okay, well that's obviously going out of bounds somehow because you can't dribble. Right. I, he's just so here's my my Toby thoughts. One, so I was debating this with my friends. And like, why don't they just bench him? Like, like what do they, like what do? Clearly, the most concerning outcome of this is they think Toby is better than we do. Like, I don't think this is like they're just playing him not to hurt his feelings. They're just playing him like the. They think he is one of their five bet. Like they view him as a starter, and that is concerning. Like I, on a large scale here, since we know the Sixers aren't winning the title, it's like who do you trust on this team? And Toby still playing really makes me question Nick Nurse and Daryl Morey. You've said this. Do you, th- do you think it's Nick Nurse wanting to play him, or do you think it's Daryl Morey? So to I thought they were on the same page. Like that was the benefit. I don't right? think they're on the same page at all anymore. I really don't. In what way? Like I like the, all right the Ricky Council thing. 
Okay. Right. That seems like Daryl Moore would want him to play. Right. I yeah. totally agree with you. Right. Uh, Buddy Heald now coming off the bench, who I is atrocious. But <laughs> yeah, like right. just like yeah, like Darryl everything Seinfeld. I thought of, by the way, everything I thought about Buddy Heald is coming to fruition. By the way, never made <laughs> you the playoffs. Cry? <laughs> he never made the playoffs in his entire career. I know he's been on loser organizations, but at some point, it's it's also it is. That's a very uh, Joe Gillio. No, dude, <laughs> yeah, 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 we're not yeah, going down that road. <laughs> the safety win loss record. Now, for those of you who are not aware. That are still listening to this podcast after we just <laughs> mock the team, mock for, the team for five for minutes. minutes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Joe Giglio yesterday, in defense of the Eagles re-signing CJ Gardner Johnson, rolled out his team's records the last <laughs> six years. He said that he's been in playoffs every year of his career. <laughs> he's, he played two games last year. <laughs> he's yeah. averaged ten wins a year, <laughs> yeah, 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 which yeah. is just it's impressive work by it Joe is, Giglio. It is, it is. But but like Buddy Heald is. So he's been on a playoff team the last six years. That is true. He's won so much. You <laughs> yeah. think that by this point he'd know how to win? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, he is such a losing basketball player. Just a lose. He's, he's one of seven the other night from three. Yeah. Like obviously. It could all change when Embiid's back, but like I think there was a big, uh, a big thing when they traded for him, saying, "Okay, they're obviously going to re-sign him after right. this year." We sure. So here's like the Toby thing. Everyone keeps saying they're going to bench him. He's not going to play in the final five minutes. Like, it's not changing. Well, like, by the way, you were on that two two podcasts ago. I always am. <laughs> so now, I'm, now, <laughs> yeah. we're, now yeah. we're going to something like, else. It's not changing. Like I think what's been so frustrating about the Sixers over the last month especially really since Embiid got hurt when Embiid was healthy I was down to believe he for was sure playing awesome Maxi looked great I think everything we said was true the second Embiid took this meniscus thing I tried for a few weeks to do like the he'll come back he'll be healthy look how he played in the bubble the thing that's really fresh me even now with the team and is making it hard for me to like analyze small things with it is I can't it's not changing like Toby is not going to get benched he is going to play in the five, final five minutes he is going to play big game big minutes in the playoffs like that is what is going to happen. And this idea of like constantly sitting around and being like, they're they're gonna bench him. Of course they're gonna bench him. Or like, this is gonna do better. But like, it's not changing. Like we've seen enough of this so far. And I think that's what's so frustrating with this team. Like, even to speak about this from a WIP perspective, like the morning show, Richie is like believing in Beatle come back and play great. Which, like, honestly, man, like props to you. I'm I'm happy you believe that. But, Yo. Yeah, yeah. But but every yeah, I finally pulled it together. <laughs> yeah. But everyone on everyone else on the show, whenever it's anything Sixers positive, it's just like smacked down immediately with negativity. Yep. And for so long it felt like, you know, well, like I was looking at it a different way. But now like Toby's not getting benched. And here's the other thing about getting to about ripping Toby. It's missing the point. It's like it's like blaming an offensive guard for the quarterback playing poorly. The problem with the Sixers right now is Embiid is hurt, and Maxi has been, look, the concussion's not his fault, but he missed time, which made him look poorly. And then he hasn't played that great. Like, he's had stretches, but he hasn't been, like, we. it would be much better if we were recording this pod and saying, wow, we've learned so much about Maxi over the last six weeks. Like when, when well, Embi- I think we actually have. Well, that's what I mean. Like, when, when Embiid went down, me and you talked about, like, this is a chance to learn about Maxi. This is a chance to, like, see if he's the guy, to, like, watch him take that step forward. And he hasn't. And that that's like, so to blame Toby, it's like, who cares, man? Like, yes, Toby's not that good. He makes too much money. Breaking news. Like, it's not new. It's not like the new problem they're having. The problem they have is that their best player is hurt and their second best player is not as good as we thought. But we That's it. But also, I think we've known this. Like, we've known all this. But I don't think we knew it about Maxi. Well, I think I think people just went a little overboard with Maxi. You know, and, and I think you... <laughs> Especially, yeah, we've disagreed on this. Like, I think you put a little bit too much expectations on him, which is fine. You know, well, you, I think I put fair expectations on him. He's about to be a max player. He's about to be a max player. He was a late first round pick, but he is about to be a max player. But it's different when, like, I just don't know what six foot guard is really taking over and carrying a team when Embiid's not out there. Embiid is a super max, a right. Hall of Famer. Maxi is a max player. But he's not a put the team on his back. Like we keep bringing up, you know, Jalen Brown or right. Devin Brook Booker or the number twos in these teams. Jamal Murray, sure. But like the Nuggets wouldn't be great without without with if it was just Murray and Jokic. They right. might be better, but the team's also better. Yes. Like this team, as currently constructed, sucks. Well, you know, like yeah, they all yeah, they, they all can't. Mo Bamba is starting <laughs> for this team, dude. I see these starting lineups sometimes, and I'm like, 
like you couldn't dream or have a nightmare of like how bad this this has got. It's 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 like it's 14, 15 Phillies ish where it's like all these bunch of random it, collection. The, you know of what bulk. they're kind of like too. They're kind of like the process Sixers if the big J's got to make the decisions on what to do with the roster. Like Mo Bamba's playing, Kelly Oubre, like veteran point yeah, guard, Kyle, Kyle Lowry. Lowry. Like they are playing the guys that everyone wanted them to sign back then. But the diff, the obvious difference is like there's a somewhat light at the end of the tunnel with Embiid. Sure, and it, that's the the difference. But and it's not even you can't even really do the whole they should tank for a draft pick because they have the six seed right now and right. and the Pacers aren't playing well. That's the frustrating thing in a weird twisted You're way. You're stuck. It's They're like no stuck. one will put him away. Like I wish he would have just fall to the Take nine. Him out back. Yeah, exactly. Take him out like, back. No one will, We're begging oh, you. Yeah. Take yeah. him out yeah. back. No one will end Put him. this team down. Every time I say to myself, like, well, they're going to be the nine seed. Like, I look and it's like, well, they're actually yeah, they're the six seed. I was like, I was like, today, because I was, I, was, I was putting together a podcast. And right. It's like, it's like, could I make the case to put it to, to sit and beat down for the year? No, because That's they're what the six I was, seed. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. They're the six seed. They could play the Cavs in round one. They're going to. Who are very beatable if Embiid plays. Can we just, can we just. Fully be honest with everyone who listens to this podcast, even though we mocked the team for the first seven minutes. <laughs> they're going to beat the Cavs in the first yeah, round. And they're going to beat the Knicks if they play them. Like, We're going to be right back into the whole, they got to win in the second round thing in two months. Well, and this is where I think, too. A month. Like, Less than a month. This is where I also think like what kind of broke me is it It just really feels like I'm reliving the same movie again. It's like, every year. That's what I'm saying. Like it, I, I'm mentally beaten down by it. But like to your thing, every time... <laughs> Every time I'm out, they pull me back in. Well, well they're ba- the play is not pulling you no, back the, in. The, the play is not are pulling yes. you back in. Yeah. But to really quick to the Toby thing again, would you bench Toby? No, I wouldn't either. Here's I wouldn't either. Here's the truth. Here's the truth, and I, and, I, and I promise you, I'm not kidding. He has to figure it out before the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. like, like there, there's no who are you going to play him through it. Batum has been awful since since he's uh, come back. You know back what really him. hurt? So a few days ago. Um, so you know Jacory from Florida, of course. Yeah, so I follow Jacory on Florida, from Florida, who's a wild follow, by the way. Okay. Lots of retweets. Um, I can't take a lot of retweets. So, dude, he live tweets every basket of a Clippers game. But regardless, every basket, every of a basket, game? it'll be like you know free throw, like da da da, like hook shot. It's dude, I respect it. Yeah, nice David, Clippers David, you Ramish, and like just a commitment to. But um, anyway, so I see a lot of Clippers fans tweets because Jacory is a Clippers fan. Um, Clippers fans are laughing at the Harden trade. It's like, look at all these bums we traded for Harden. Batum basically doesn't do anything. Sucks. Morris isn't on the team anymore. Can't remember who the third guy they got was. Well, Covington, Covington. Yeah, Covington. Is Covington still a Sixer? Yeah, he's not playing. Like inactive. Good. Right. KJ Martin. Right. So there. Yeah. Who is a <laughs> yeah. he's a six four rebounder. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He's basically a power forward. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what he's supposed to be. He's got yeah. a weird body type. And what a second obviously round? I would love I'm, to have his body, but sure. he has yeah. <laughs> and they got what the the first it, they have the picks they have the picks. it comes down to this off season for that. exactly right but it is painful to like I remember the good days when we were doing the pod and it was like laughing about what a great trade that was yeah you know that might have gotten out of audio photo. probably didn't age well I would say that most of the things we've said on this podcast have yeah, not aged well it's been a disaster yes although I think we're heating up like now the negativity is <laughs> I really agree now up. that I can be negative about them like yeah. I'm, I'm excited because now that you're free and you've yeah. cried on the Honestly, podcast it feels like my weights lift, lifted off my shoulder they suck okay yeah, they're the worst like, <laughs> they are, they're, they're the worst they're, they're not going to win the title this year all right so but they are they are going to the second round they are going to the second round agreed and then the, at that point they will lose do you are you how close or far are you from my take that Daryl Morey has no idea I'm not well, what a winning going, basketball player looks like. So I don't know if I fully agree with you on that, but like I don't again, I don't think the red flag is how bad Toby is. The red flag is that they're playing him a ton. Like that's the red flag. It's like, all right, here's a good example. Quez Watkins. Quez Watkins with the Eagles. Everybody was like, he sucks. Why are they playing him? Da, da, da. They don't think Quez sucked. Like they threw the ball to him. They ran play like so the the red flag is well, yes. At least they signed Vontae Parker. Yeah, it's that's going to help. Out. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, <laughs> tons of separation. But like the red flag is that Daryl Morey and Nick Nurse are continuing to play Toby because they actually think he's good. But now, Nick but to your point, I wouldn't bench him either because what's the point? Like was just to be mean to him. Like, who are you going to start? Like, like Batum, but Batum's not playing well. Right. KJ Martin. No. Right. So like, the only the only upside of the team is if Toby can like. He, now he did figure it out post and be speech to him. He did, yes. For so two that games, was good for one game. For for yeah. good two games there. Yeah. That was adorable. Um 
But is it Nick Nurse wanting to play him? Like that's what I can't. They there does I, seem to be a disconnect there between between those two. And Nurse has been like a little agitated post game the last. Yeah, because I think he feels this thing crumbling yeah, in front of him. Yeah, it's probably got to be terrible to coach his team right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because well, he's probably looking at these players like, dude, it's unbelievable. At least like Masai Ujiri gave him uh, like a, at least a bunch of dudes, which is sad because we used to think they had a bunch of dudes. Also, a take that it an age. Well. Yeah, yeah. But none of them have like gotten any be- like they haven't expounded on it. Right. It's it's like at least with the the Toronto the last couple of years. Sure, like. Their best player is not as good as Embiid. Right. But it was like just dudes up and down. The, I agree. And now he's got to play again. Like, Some can of we these just, things are, are laughable. Now, the, now play. he has to play Oubre. He yeah. has to play 38-year-old Lowry. <laughs> yeah. He has to start. The Mo Bamba one's the funniest. He has to start Mo Bamba, who can't play. He has to play K.J. Martin, campaign, Batum, healed, Paul Reed. Who's the guy that they signed that like Jeff Dalton? Yeah, that was that was Jeff it. Dalton. That Jr. is like so when they the Eagles signed Zach Bound, that linebacker, it was like someone tweeted it looked like a made up Madden character. Jeff Dalton feels like the name of like a college player in like NCAA where they can't put the real names. Right. He also, <laughs> he also gave him uh, Kenny Lofton Jr. Yeah, that was bad. Like yeah. it's just it's, it really has all fallen apart. They're all like that's there's there's they're ba- they're all ba- like Paul Reed the other night, and I don't care that he made it. Right, he shot a three with 13 seconds left in the shot clock. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like also, how about Hubie Brown loving Paul? Reed? I know it's, it's got to be the wild, like it's like the fox and the hound. Like it's crazy to think like that's like you know. Hubie Brown. I mean, just God bless Hubie Brown. Yeah, the fact, the fact that he's still how old is he? He's like 89, 89, something like that. Yeah, like God bless Hubie Brown. It's got to uh-huh. be some type of rule about like. Once you hit eighty, I don't know if you can be a sports. Fan. But he's, I, he's, he's still not bad. I, I, the, the, the Paul Reed rant was weird. I was like, "What's what we right. here?" But the fact that he could even do it at respects the uh, he's uh, he's out the mud. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I need him in a hoodie. <laughs> That's right. Could you imagine <laughs> Hubie Brown wearing that? Yeah, you know, the picture awesome. of him like walking out of the hotel. The, with the, the Hubie, Hubie Paul Reed thing is just fin- it's, it's one of the best bits going right now in media. It's the only thing to to have joy about. You sit there, <laughs> you're, you're watching them. <laughs> in a back and forth battle, a three <laughs> yards and a cloud of dust. Uh, the Knicks game. game was so ugly. I like I was watching. I was like, I'm like, well, how are the Knicks not pulling away here? I know doing anything. I know, and then, and then you know that's when you said they have no chance of getting out. Of yeah, round. yeah. And Knicks fans tried to come for me. Yeah, I can't wait. At this point, the thing I'm looking forward to most is when the Knicks get pounced. Are you a Knicks fan? No. Okay. Good. I got big ties though. Not, yeah, you're not, you're not, no. Fan. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. You're not, uh, so I will and say, as a Bucks fan, I would assume you're not. You know, I'm not loyal to anyone. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm a I'm Magic just, fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Uh, it is funny though, how Philadelphia is kind of taking everything from New York. You know what I mean? Like we took, yeah, Huff. We took uh, Saquon. We took Spike, and in return, <laughs> in return, we've given them Villanova. Yeah, like and, Villanova. And Villanova is closer to being a New York team. Yeah, it's a good, that's a good point. Than, than would you trade? School. Would you trade Nova for those three players? What do you mean? Like, like Nova? School? Yeah. What, like what about the, Cabrini? Does Cabrini yeah. combine like with the Nova? Of, of a conditional Cabrini. Cabrini. Yeah. We'll throw in. <laughs> we'll throw in Cabrini. <laughs> yeah, 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 Cabrini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although Kylie Kelsey is making the final commencement speech in uh, Cabrini history. Really? Yes. She's Kylie a, Kelsey is. Well, she's a Cabrini grad. Oh, is she? Yeah, she played field hockey there. Right. Your journalism, I mean, I'm you I mean, I think it's a topical person to get. I'm sure she'll do a great job. Of course, I'm, for the final one ever. I'm just a little well, who else would you choose? I who else pay someone super famous? I don't know if they got that guess, the, Cabrini, that kind of dough. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're shutting down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know this. Kelsey's are hot in the streets right now. They are. They are. They are. Uh, Embiid. Yeah. Right, Where so are we at with Embiid? So. The report from Ramona Shelburne. That was a good sigh into the microphone. Thanks, yeah. The report from Ramona Shelburne about him being nowhere close was really just kind of the final dagger. Like, I, here's what's going to happen. Embiid's probably going to play the final three or four games. He'll look good. And then they'll, they'll again, win the first round. Like, I think this Embiid thing is, has gone slower than I thought it was going to. Like, when initially, because I believe the surgery was the first few days of February, or at least... Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski tweeted out. Oh wow! Look like at that. you. In the, you, fir- proud in the of you. first few days, so it was two. F- it was February fourth uh, when he tweeted out the surgery. Then at that point, I think there was hopes for like mid March, or there was hopes for hey, maybe it'll be quicker than we think, and like he'll. It's gonna end up taking longer than we thought. Like he probably won't play. I think John John Clark tweeted today. They're still hopeful he'll play the first or second week of the of April. Yeah. Like 
That's it's basically weird. the whole season. He's going to end up missing February, March, and half of April. It's weird how they've downplayed it. I can only ever see things through the Eagles' lenses, but imagine this with Jalen. Like, right. the closest I can think of, which is not a good comparison if you want to be to come back, is when in 2019 or 2018, when Carson had the back injury. Yeah. Do you remember this? Of course. And they would not rule him out each week. It was like, we'll see. We'll see. They didn't put him on IR. When everyone knew he was not playing again. I'm a little worried they're just slow pl- slow playing this where like where he's not going to come back or the, the comeback is going to be very minimal. Like at this point, it is not going to be like, oh, he ended up actually missing five weeks and it wasn't a big deal. Like he's going to end up missing, you know, a lot of like a lot of time. I thought they did this with Jalen in 22, though, didn't they? The whole hopeful with the shoulder thing. They hopefully he's going to play. And then he, they really missed him out. two games. Though. I know, but yeah. they're still like. Yeah, well, that I think that was more gamesmanship. I think the Carson. Oh, thing, the Sirianni yeah. competitive advantage. Yeah, yeah. Love that. The, the Carson thing in 2018 was about Carson's ego. Why is competitive advantage not one of the core values? So I preaches. should ask him that. It also starts with C. Yeah. So <laughs> he would be so mad if I asked him that. <laughs> but but it, would be, it would be really funny if I was like, I'm just curious. Are you going to put competitive advantage as a core value? He talks about it every every. every he does. I mean, look, conference. it is a core value. It's a, it's a core value of the whole, the whole yeah. organization. Yeah. Um, but I think in 2018, it was about uh, Carson's ego. I think, like, the Joel thing about, like, not being honest about where he's at is Joel doesn't want it, people to know. Like, this was – and he, he, he shouldn't be, like, ashamed of it. But, like, he suffered a major injury. He's hurt. Like, I think the, the – lo- I don't want to use the word lying. But, like, the lack of honesty about what's going on in transparency is, like, infuriating. Like a few, I forget what national game it was. It might have been the the Mavericks game. The sideline reporter goes, "Yeah, Joel's doing on court workouts." Like, what? Okay, like when were we supposed to find that out? And then Ramona comes out and goes, "He's not even close." Like, why can't we just get clear, concise information on what's going on here? This is gonna be the most Howard Eskin thing of all time. Can't wait. But spent some time with him yesterday. So spent a lot of time with the King. Uh, but they need to sell playoff tickets. I just don't think that's it. They, I really don't. They need to get the deposits in. I just, I don't. So, you, so if they came out and ruled out Embiid for the year, no one. Oh uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Like yeah. if they if they said he's done, no one, they're not getting the playoff ticket deposits. I'm just curious, like who's a season ticket holder that doesn't buy the playoff deposit though? Like it'd be weird to well, me. Would you, would you spend money on playoff tickets, dude? I I pay every if Embiid's month. If Embiid's not playing, if Embiid, if it come, if they say today Embiid's done, would you still buy playoff tickets? If I was already a season ticket member and had to pay more, yes, I would. Uh, but again, you, you're putting yourself in this. You just cried <laughs> yeah. 25 minutes ago yes. and said how they're the worst. <laughs> yeah. You're putting extra money down because, to watch this. But to this, have a season. T- just dog crap. But to ha- I just can't imagine a world where I care enough to have season tickets and put that type of money out and then be like, well, I just won't go to the playoff games. Well, I guess, listen, if we're in different tax brackets, I that, Well, there, that's part of it. But, current tax bracket. But even people that. Oh, it's hard for them to pay for it, and they still do it. I still think those people would. Do you think they sell out a playoff game if he uh, doesn't play? Yeah, I mean, right? Like they have, they have, they, they have to. Do they pay pay seat fillers. <laughs> yeah, give the tickets out. By the way, your boy Josh Harris yesterday signed a lot of uh, signed a lot of veterans trying to build a new culture. I actually think they, I actually owner. I think the Commanders had a good day. Like people are mocking them for signing the, all the old guys, right? But like they need to create a whole new culture there. I agree. And they brought in three winners. Yeah, like, what, like it does hurt. What hurts my Josh Hart, Josh Harris ooh, argument is love Josh Hart. Yeah, I do. Dude, Josh Hart had what twenty rebounds the other night in that game. Nova, oh, one, Nova. Yeah, nineteen, nineteen. Dude, rebounds. I've yeah. wanted again Nova I've, tough I've guys that I've wanted forever. I just have, and ten, man. I've always wanted Josh Hart in the Sixers. If you could pick any of the Nova guys to come here, who would you pick? Brunson. Great question. Brunson. I think it's yeah. You think over Mikel? Yeah. It's either. For the Sixers, like oh, for the Sixers, for the Mikhail. Sixers currently, or just yeah. Like, well, you think I was talking about? What is it? Like, I, I thought you were starting a team. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. that's what I thought. If I was starting a team, I'd pick Bruns. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But for okay. the Sixers, I'm taking Josh Hart. Well, the good part about Mikel Bridges, though, is that they drafted him. Right, right. That was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they let him go for who? nothing. Zaire, Zaire, Zaire. 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 and the first, and the first, and the first, which they got for Toby, or was he traded? Oh yeah, nice, awesome, nice. Gets better. Um. What was that? Probably the worst trade in Philadelphia. That's not the worst trade in Philadelphia sports history, but it's pretty close. It's, it's up there. It's on the, it's on the list. Well, and the other thing to the red flag is they're going to end up not trading him. Like they kept him the whole time. Yeah, no. So it's very. Wouldn't cool. trade him for a crumble cookie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you're saying about your the thing that hurt your uh, Josh Hart thing. Josh Harris. 
Oh, is Josh that? Harris. Oh, what we got? Yeah. Josh conversation. Harris. <laughs> what hurts my Josh Harris argument is he so clearly cares about Washington more than the Sixers. Way more. Yeah. Which, like, look, it's man, like close. he grew what up a fan. Least, like, you think we're ahead of the Devils? I think it's like even. Yeah, it's awesome. The Sixers are probably worth more. So, do you remember way. when they were gonna put together put the Sixers, Devils, and Commanders all in the same cable package? Where are they? There was a, that was there was talk of that. So take the Sixers off of NBC Sports Philly <laughs> and and, and Josh Harris to make his own. TV network. Glenn Mack now will not. Be <laughs> he, <laughs> would, <laughs> he would blow a gas. <laughs> that was not up to Glenn Mack now. No. Of things he wouldn't no. Do. Casual that Sixers fans, they'll trade me for a crumble cookie. But at the end of the day, they have to realize you're not getting a six foot nine forward back who uh. can damn near shoot 40% from three, guard <laughs> other team's best player, shoot, post up, drive, play 70 plus games a year. So Tobias people have, Harris. Pe- Tobias yeah. Harris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People have been speculating, like, why he looks so out of it. Like, you know, he looks checked out. People are saying maybe he's mad he wasn't traded or he's mad that he was going to be traded and he wasn't. I actually think he knows it's over. Yeah. Like, I, I think he's out there being like, I'm not going to get resigned here. We're not going to do anything this year. And he's just, like, checked out and frustrated. There has to be a level of sadness of knowing, like, they came so close so many times. And now, like, he's done. <laughs> and at least he's putting good, good tape out there. Yeah, for the league to get yeah. a also contract. Can't, if he wants to get resigned somewhere else, he can't get hurt. No. Could you imagine? Yeah, that's a good point too. Can you imagine if uh, they resigned him, like one year? Like I might need an emergency. They can't. Emergency pod for well, me yes, too. I think, if, yeah. if, if simply, they resign Toby, we're gonna yeah. Immediately. They simply can't. They 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 cannot resign Toby. If they like if they want to resign Toby, I honestly think you just fire Dale Morey. Dude, like if you're Josh here. Harris and he comes to you and, and like and seriously says like. I'm gonna resign Toby. I think you just fire him. Tobias Harris, the for he has been here for six years. I don't. He doesn't have a notable moment. Like, wh- like it's a good question. I'm trying to think what the best Toby memory would be. Dude, it was when in the COVID year when he did the Omni All Star thing. Mm. Oh yeah, that was right. The the crowd of no one. Good. Uh, it's a good Jeff. It's a, it's a Ike Reese special. It is. He loves that one. He really does. I just. He's contributed almost nothing to this basketball team. Yeah. In six years. It's, yeah. It's unfreaking believable. And I think, too, like when we, when we started the pod and they were really good to start. Remember when I said if they beat the Celtics, they would win 60 games? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of all the Celtics that have aged poorly, that yeah, that worried was... about the seeding in game two of the season. <laughs> game game three. one. Yeah. No, it was the game... Bucks. Oh, uh, the Celtics. The Celtics yeah. was the key one. But the Bucks, I also thought they got screwed and cost them playoff seeding. I, yeah. I know this podcast is all over the place and it's. Turn into a bit of a stream of consciousness. Yeah, it's good. This is healthy for me. It's it's, it's cathartic <laughs> for you. Yeah. How about the the stones on Buddy Heald? Again, he's turning into a, <laughs> one of my least favorites. We're gonna too. resign him too. Um, how about the stones on Buddy Heald to say with a straight face that he hates the Nova guys because they took a title from him? <laughs> it was ninety five. So yeah, he did. One of the the cider ladder reporters said Uh-oh. that. I think they won by James. Like, it was yeah, ninety five like to fifty one. <laughs> it was ninety five to fifty one, uh. and Dante Divincenzo locked his ass. Off. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. so I'm sure they took Buddy Hill out with like nine minutes to go in yeah. the second half. Or yeah, something. that's embarrassing. That's so, like hey, almost half the game. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Like yeah. you didn't go. You cost it to your team a title. Not yeah. That. Um. It's my last day in my 30s, Elliot. Oh, yeah. I know. Try not to cry. Oh, wait. I had one more point to make about the Sixers. Okay. Sorry. Then we'll... <laughs> Screw your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you. Yeah, I mean, 30 is a big birthday, but what? Right, in a second. It's all good. So, at the beginning of the pod, I remember we were saying when Harden was gone and Maxi was killing it and Doc was gone, it was like the bad baggage is gone and like the hatred people had toward this team could go away because they were fun to watch. Maxi was fun. Like all those things. Uh-huh. It's like, it's the worst it's ever been now. It like well, is but crumbled people are, to but people aren't mad at them. Oh, I disagree. No, no, it's actually worse. People aren't watching. Oh, nice. People aren't watching or caring. Yes, well, like at least when at least when they were winning and like playing well, and people will get excited. We get excited. Yeah, you have the people ah, get out right, of the second right, round. Yeah. Now it's just no one cares. Yeah, like no one cares at all. Yeah, it really, really kind of crashed. <laughs> But hey, if they win four in a row, they'll be like the four seed. So yeah, really like, fun. Yeah, no, this is like this is this is pre-process. Like yeah. even the years when Embiid missed time, like they were still watchable because this year like Ben, right, who was like an All Pro. Ben, oh god, has Ben been a been a, been a better sixer than Tyrese? Whew. Um, when when Embiid no. would go down, 
When B would well, go they did down, go on, like, would go all they would go <laughs> off when when healthy Ben was playing. When and B's been out and it's been Maxi, they've completely cratered. Wow. That's yeah, I mean, I think, a it's, all I think it's hard to dispute that. Three-time All-Star, by the way. Now, would you rather have Prime Ben, like, before Ben's, like, whole career? Of course, like, career. like 20. Yeah. Would you rather that player or Maxi if you're starting a team? Might be Ben. It might be Ben. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I, I think, think you def- can, I think I think it's definitely Ben. I think you can find other players around. And I do think, for what it's worth, like, Embiid did hurt Ben as well. Like, having, like, a your team built around his center definitely impacted Ben's career. Yeah. Well, if, if it was just a... If there was there, we would have definitely had the argument. Are they better with <laughs> yeah. with Ben the free flowing offense yes, than like yeah. than slowing it down with the right. If it was Ben <laughs> and hashtag surround him with shooters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, be good. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, prime Ben. Look, Ben did what Maxi could not, which is keep the team afloat when. Uh, uh, we, are right. <laughs> right. we are down bad. We are down bad. The Sixers bad. aren't being kept afloat by Maxi. They're being kept afloat by like the ineptitude of the other team. Seventy nine, seventy three. The other yeah. day. Well, this has been a dark podcast. Yeah. As usual. Honestly, I feel better. Good. I'm proud of you. Uh, good. The, the birthday thing. Oh no, just last last day of my thirties. Nothing yeah. crazy. And uh, I have I have taken a a uh, a pause from gambling on basketball. I needed it. Why? It was a tough stretch. <laughs> Losing too much it's money. It's been a tough month. Yeah. It's been a tough the, month. The, the redeposit never feels good. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I'm, 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 I am probably, though, I'm going to cash out my Pacers future. Why? Well, point? because Mathurin's now hurt. So, like, you know. Are you going to cash? How much are you really cash out? They still offer me 10 bucks. Okay, I would just keep it at that point. No, I can get my 10 bucks back. That's true. I guess you can get they back into gambling. Turn that into a parlay. Um, <laughs> so, so, someone hit my car. Oh yeah, yeah. Like really hit your car too. It wasn't like a little side swipe. Like there's legit. Yeah, like it's like legitimately dented, and like it's bad. So here's the funniest part of this whole story. So I'm at McGurk's for 12 hours yesterday. Great time. I was like, by the way, how about the weather when we left McGurk's yesterday? Great, unbelievable weather. Great weather today too. Yeah. When so we're like, driving to McGurk's in line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm driving. I'm like, God, it's nice. I have Zach Bryan on, mm-hmm. of course. And Can I send you new Zach Bryan to listen to? Or you I'm not, not there yet. Okay. But I do think I'm going to download his track list or his set list for the concert so I can learn all those songs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the Orange. Seems like Something a popular one. Yeah. All right. So I'm driving and I notice on my passenger side, someone had left a note with a, like a like a piece of paper. And at first I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And so, <laughs> sorry for cursing. <laughs> I'm like, it's probably like, you know, like $10 off, whatever. And then I'm like, oh, I should probably look at it as it looks handwritten. So I pull over and I get the piece of paper and it says like the person's name and a number. And it's like a, it's a female name. And I'm like, like, what could this possibly be? I, and I, so I'm like, someone must have hit my car. So I walk around the car and I didn't notice it at first. Not a guy. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I drive all the way home and like, literally I'm holding the piece of paper and I'm like, I should just throw this out. Like, I'm not going to, whatever. I didn't. I get home, I walk to my passenger side to get stuff out of my car, and I notice like the whole front has been like dented. <laughs> and I and to this person's credit, they've been very responsible, very helpful. They feel bad. Like it's but I mean, think of how close I, I could have been just being like, ah, screw this. Hey. <laughs> and then, well, and credit them for li- leaving a note. In all seriousness, like they could easily just left, left. Hun- Yes, like obviously you should hundred percent do it, but let's all be honest, it would be so easy just to pull away. Of course. Like so easy. But and yeah, I and mean, it's not over yet, knock on wood, but major props to the to the person that left the number. But it was like, Man, I keep, you were, because you were probably delirious leaving McGurk's. Yeah, I was, you, yeah. You were there for a long 12 time. hours straight. Yeah. Well, and also like, so I'm going home, I'm super excited to get home and it's no fun walking the door and being like, so Kristen, good news, the car got hit. <laughs> it wasn't my fault to be clear, yeah. but. Well, um, usually we get hit in Philly. Like, that's, well, that's the funniest part is when yeah. we move to the city where like our car is going to get sideswiped. Like, so Zach Berman, um, used to live in the city and said his car would always get nicked up. And so I was thinking like, it's going to happen. Hasn't happened yet. Go out to the, the suburbs and this is where my car get, gets hit. Yeah. That's yeah. How, that's how but the life. person left a note. I will say, say in the city. They yeah. In the city, there would, there would no, there would be no note. Would so not be a note. yeah. So it seems to all be going well, but major props to the person for, for leaving the note. As you get shouted out on clap your hands. Yeah. If it all goes well, maybe I'll say her, say her name. Yeah. Okay. Say the name. It's good. Say the name. <laughs> yeah, say, say, the name. say the name. Yeah. <laughs> well, I uh, hope to see everyone tonight. Adam McGurk's, by the way, Ricky Council's last six games uh, after scoring 16 versus Celtics. Nice. 
five minutes, did not play. Nine nine minutes, six minutes, did not play six minutes. Dude, the Purposeful. quote the quote from him where he was kind of like, if they don't want to play me, that like I hope he leaves. Like I don't want him to leave, but like if he signs somewhere else this offseason, I will not blame no, him. Not I will really. blame the team. Yeah. yeah. Nick Nurse. Um, but yeah, see everyone out. McGurk's in Lionville. It's gonna be a great time. Come watch Sixers <laughs> yeah. who are the worst. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's a literal that? worst. Yeah. I got Uber so I can, hey, my car doesn't get hit, but, but I can drink. Yeah. I right. won't. That's a long Yeah, Uber probably like $200 of Uber. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll see everyone out at McGurk's tonight. Uh, this is for Ellie Shore Parks and Jack Fritz. This has been another edition of Clap Your Hands.